Good evening. Each number has a personality of its own, writes Paul Oster in The Music of Chance. The 12 is very different from the 13. The 12 is upright and conscientious and intelligent, whereas a 13 is a, is a loner, a shady character who won't think twice about breaking the law. Numbers have souls, and you can't help getting involved with them in a personal way. And if you let them, numbers can bring calm and order to the chaos of the outside world, and they can take over your life. I'm Gerald Suster, author and acknowledged occult expert. For me, every number is sacred and has an infinitude of meanings. The number that means most to me is 93. I'm the numerologist Meg Pringle Adamson, and I'm fascinated by all number. I'm particularly curious about the number five, which recurs for me the number of freedom and expansion. I'm Graham Roos. I'm a writer and a poet, and the numbers that hold significance for me are 2, 7 and 11. I'm Don Stalibras from Bognor Regis. I'm a poet, astrologer, chess problemist and a Buddhist, and I'm particularly interested in the number 42, which is the answer to the world, the universe and everything. I'm Nigel Bourne. I'm an expert on the occult. I'm fascinated by all numbers, and in particular coincidences. The number that really takes my interest is 23. I'm Christopher Gutteridge. I've been intrigued with the number 23 since some of my experiences with the Discordian Society. Is it true, do numbers have souls? Do they have personalities of their own? I think so. Yeah. In numerology, they say that there is a soul number, there is a persona number, the psyche number is the secret self when you're snuggled up in the duvet at night, the one that knocks at your door and says, look, this is what it means. What number is that? And the soul number is, is from the vowels in a name uh, in numerology, and the, psych the persona number is the consonants in a name, according to Babylonians and Chaldeans. Isn't mm. that where you get um, the expression, I've got your number? That's right. Um, yeah. Like you couldn't have, uh, yeah. you give your name your days away are numbered, religiously, yeah. you shouldn't, but you shouldn't give your number away that's either. Right. If someone's got your number, that's a dangerous thing to have, isn't it? It's like having a piece of your soul. Well, exactly, yes. yeah, absolutely. Which yeah. is the basis of the, the Hebrew system called gematria, which bases the meaning of the word with its number. So that if you have the name of something, you also have its number, exactly. you also have its mystique, its identity. So numbers give the world an identity. We live in a world which is absolutely ruled by numbers. And what about individual numbers? Paul Oster, there was a lot more numbers, but I thought it would be a bit dull if I just sort of went page well, after page. 12 and 13 Oster. is quite fascinating because we go up to 12 when we learn our times tables mm. at, at school. You know, we learn the 12. Why don't we learn the 13 times table? That was table? financial, wasn't it, with the um, shillings or the we old used to money? We to 16, I believe. People of a certain generation learnt the 16 times table so that they could work out their pound, shilling and pence, and when it became decimal, they... But why do they stop at 12 and oh, not at they 10? They didn't. They did modern heads because the Sumerians um, uh, calculated in six digits every day. It was normal for them to, to assimilate and to calculate. I mm, quite agree, well. but aren't we uh, forgetting the main thrust of the discussion, which is, do numbers have soul? Mm -hmm. There is a saying, God is the grand geometer. Uh, God is the grand arithmetician. The universe is predicated upon number, mm -hmm. and I think it is that which gives us a fascination that the only way we as human beings have found to make acceptable patterns out of the universe in which we live and move and have our being has actually been through number rather than through words. Mm -hmm. And that's why certain numbers have a special significance for uh, individual in, numbers. Yes, they do have soul in that sense. Mm. What does the number nine say? Is it a contemplative Nine is number? a special religious number in astrology. Mm. It's the a completion of, of, Buddha, of, is it not? of very joy. The Buddhists are particularly prone to mm. 
uh, but uh, eight is significant to the Buddha because uh, balance you know, of spiritual and material, the, the two zeros, of wisdom, only the, uh, zero. yes, well, the, the, the wheel of life, it. yes, nine, uh, nine of the but, four principles in Buddhism, four noble truths, and the noble eightfold path in Buddhism is eight precepts. But nine, Christianity. of course, is the, is, the, is the moon number, which is the number of change. And it's interesting that nine is the number that doesn't change other numbers. That's right, but it's um, absorbed by every other number. It's absorbed by every yes. other number. So, um, but, eleven to nine, you will you will get the eleven will always win. To, to go back to to, to do um, uh, uh, numbers have souls, and you 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 quoted uh, twelve and thirteen. Um, but wouldn't it be true to say that the numbers one to twelve? particularly of all numbers, have specific meanings, and it's the multiples and integers thereof that... The compound. That, exactly. The compound value is very And 13 is a strange well. one, because it is that 1 over mm. 13, 1 over 12, which is 13, 14 and, uh, and onwards. It's but if you're a 14-ist, it's 1 under 14. Well, absolutely, I suppose. Are there 14-ists? No, I, just, I was just trying to make an argument. <laughs> but in all religious systems, it, the, the, but it's the 1 to 12, it's the certain numbers, yeah. particularly 3, for example, and 12, mm -hmm. um, and, and 9, as you were saying, and they're all related, um, that have specific meanings. A lot of people think that um, t 13 is unlucky because that's the number of people that were at the Last Supper mm -hmm. yes, but, I mean, that, in the Christian... Uh, that's simply a method of saying that mm. um, we want our religion fit. to be better than yours. Mm. The original reason for 13 being considered unlucky is that there are 13 lunations or full moons in every year. And that, of course, was uh, the number of full moon sabbats celebrated by the witches in the, in the Middle Ages and so forth. But for some reason we only have 12 months. We what only have 12 months. That's the Julian calendar, of course. In the, but if uh, we had these 13, the easiest way to turn around and say, well, look, I don't think this religion ought to be here anymore, is to say mm -hmm. that that number is bad fortune. Um, and give it and, a Christian gloss. And give it a, well, which, and, is, and which has happened with so many well. other things I as well. Agree. I thought mm. God's number was seven. From an astrological point of view, you try seven is God a is all numbers. <laughs> seven is a very spiritual number. It has to be. There's no, there's no such number. thing as one number. I can't agree. <laughs> because 360 is divisible by all numbers up to six, mm. but not by mm. seven. This makes it very spiritual to the early philosophers. Mm. And if you do study astrology, you will find that if you do divide the circle into sevens and look at the aspects, people with those uh, seventh aspects are very spiritual. spiritual. Mm. Mm. Well, in uh, numerology, I mean, one of the best systems, as Nigel here said, is uh, Gemetria, uh, the ancient Hebrew system coming down, it's alleged, all the way from Moses. Where it's alleged, there is a connection between letter and number. And so you take a word and you put it into numbers, according to Kabbalah, and then it's held that it equates with any other word that adds up to the same number. This is particularly interesting on uh, 358, where um, the Hebrew for Messiah adds up to the Hebrew for serpent. But uh, The Hebrew this... for Messiah is, is Elohim. No, not entirely. It's mes Mesach, isn't it? Mesach, yeah. Yes. yeah. Elohim, uh, to diverge, fractionally from numbers. Elohim is a plural and it's a female plural, yeah. uh, which is interesting because the, the, that's the going God to bring is us a spaceman people so that uh, <laughs> it's important. they, <laughs> they oh, who come from the yes, sky. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Do we but that is the world. And, and the Buddhist, they and also the Buddhist say hamburgers are nice to eat, but hey, <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> but that is uh, diverging slightly from but, the point. Uh, but in, in Pythagorean the, numerology... It's not so paradoxical that there should be a connection between serpent and Messiah because serpent we're not just talking about something as limited as the Christian mythos where the serpent is evil. We're talking about the Kundalini in the Hindu system and in the Buddhist well, system, in which comes up through... When, uh, in the Jerusalem, portrayed himself uh, with, with serpent's horns. The serpent horned of wisdom, serpent, yeah. actually, specifically, I believe. But you're coming at this from a, from a Satanist perspective, aren't Certainly you? not. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. I thought you were... I, no, I'm not. Uh, it's the last thing I am. Satanism is infantile, puerile, childish and juvenile. Yeah, but yeah. isn't your number 666? <laughs> no, it's not my number. My number's 419, actually, although my favourite's uh, 93. No, um, I don't believe in the Christian God, and by the same token, I certainly don't believe in the Christian devil. But I think, and I think so you're using I find both aspects of positive and negative. Devil. 
Mm. You were using both aspects of positive and negative to describe, were you? Well, and the positive the and negative and the are the basic mm. tools of description of the entire universe. That's right. I, and we have night and day. If mm. we look at the current um, trend for using computers for almost everything, from your microwave oven to now you can even get a computer-based iron, for goodness sake. Yes, yeah. um, <laughs> so when I, when, I, when I rarely <laughs> press my trousers, I'm actually <laughs> using the, the numbers zero and one. The whole <laughs> world seems to be based around instruments that use the idea of positive and negative, zero and one, the on and off state, to produce the world that we live in. And, and what, what about Pythagoras? zero? What about zero? I mean, how does zero um, um, fit into it? Fit into everything? Is, zero is it a, a number? negating number? No, it's not ah. a negating number. I mean, there are some that would say that zero is not a number. Zero mm. in numerology, the, but the way I look at it, is a complete cycle, something that's completed. And if I see someone or, or look at a chart that has a zero in it, like a 10 or a 20, I will, I will show you someone who's got an ancient skill or interested in a period of history. Um, and they have a great skill in that, and it's like a complete cycle, a circle. But numerologically, you can't have, if you have um, a, a number, a year number, mm -hmm. you can't have naught. No, but you can have it in the compound of that. And uh, most numerologists say that there, are, there is no such thing as zero in a chart because the numbers go one to nine and the three master numbers, 11, 22 and 33. But there are two zeros in the eight and this is where the Buddhist philosophy comes in too. The top of the eight is the spiritual world. The base of the eight, the material oh, right. world. Oh, right, yes. And That's I think there's two zeros It's interesting that you say that 22 is a master number. What's the reason for that? It is, it is supposed to be a global, it's, it's ultimate caring, multiple of caring. 22 trumps. Well, the mm. 22 trumps mm -hmm. of, the, of the tarot, of course, um, plus one for unity, which gives 23, mm. but I had to get that in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's <laughs> one, which is zero. Your number's 23, but somebody yeah. else's number here is yeah. 23 or so. Mm. So you two have both got 23 as your number. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that the two of you get on especially well? Well, I think we've got some interests in common. It's um, a number that's sort of characterised by a certain... Um, in sort of people with a sort of range of interests, I think. <laughs> I think that's one way of describing it. Yeah, it seems yeah. to hobbyists. Um, <laughs> yeah, hobbyists. Is how would you phrase it? Um, I, I would have said that lunatics, frankly. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, but then that's me. If you meet someone who likes them twenty-three, you like hold them at arm's length. Yeah. Well, I, I tend to. Yes. Mm. Twenty-three is a fascinating. It's extraordinary how often it comes up. I mean, it's it's mm. a bizarre number. In your life. Um, in other people's lives as well. It's not just yeah. mine. I mean, I, I, I don't claim any unique ability to have 23 shouting itself at me from the rooftops. I have an enormous amount of friends who were born on the 23rd, mm. actually, yes. strangely. Yeah. You don't seek them out. It just you find out at a later mm -hmm. date. Yeah. 23 always seems to come up in my experience when uh, there's a sort of random factor disrupting yes. order. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it one more and that's interesting. And that's interesting because in numerology, th th that's the compound number of five, one of the compounds of five, and that also is the number of freedom and expansion. And people in a five-year and the nine-year cycle of numerology have a high chaos factor. They can reach the highest mountain and have the biggest crash as well. So you're you're bringing that chaotic factor. So no need to bring my computer into this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the chaos. F and it's interesting because the, the two, the two, and the the twenty-three via numerology is caring and the three is spontaneity and dating but everything's got a positive and negative number so there would be non-caring and there would be disastrous attempts at things so there's a chaos factor from the numerological viewpoint only and that seemed to cover all bases there no it did, it did not no no we're talking about chaos and expansion well when we go then we should go back to zero because i happen to believe that uh, the universe came from zero there was zero and then there was a point within zero, and then there was the Big Bang, and absolutely everything came out well, of that. But it came from absolute yes. zero, zero, absolute nothingness. nothingness. Because zero is the information that there mm -hmm. is nothing, whereas absolute nothing is not even having the information to say there's nothing there. Well, yes, I mean, what you're describing there is, is the difference between zero as a functional number mm. within mathematics and zero as being the blank absence space. of anything. Yeah, not even the um, no. I mean, to actually describe the absence of anything is very, very difficult indeed. It's worse than infinity. But isn't zero is. actually represented in almost every culture that's been literate and numerate as a circle? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are. And that's in there common are, to oh. all to all cultures. That's, that's even common and in the in, zero always looks the in same. In Chinese, doesn't that tie in with uh, Einstein's theory that uh, space is curved but finite? Well, it, well, uh, well, absolutely. The uh, forty-two. Who am I to argue with Albert, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can the see you had to, to talk about forty-two. For, oh, yes, because as, as your number's forty-two, but also my number's forty-two. But also five hundred eighty-eight, and also the name Cynthia. Ah, 588 Cynthia, yes. Cynthia Payne, like myself, comes from Bognor Regis. But the way I relate it to 588 is 
that I studied 42 in the Portsmouth Telephone Book and the Brighton Telephone Book. I divide all numbers by 42. And there's only one Cynthia in the Portsmouth Telephone Book, and this number is divisible by 588. Have you called her up? <laughs> <laughs> but I know who she is in the present life. That this is related to Lewis Carroll in 42. But another interesting thing about 588, this is the most peculiar way in which numbers are allied to other synchronicities. My wife and I were in a Saga coach trip going from Prague to Vienna. Asteroid 588 is the number of Achilles, 588. When we got on the coach in Prague, the courier read out a letter from a chap who'd had to go home, and he said in this letter, I have torn my Achilles tendon. When we got to Austria, to Vienna in the evening, my wife and I were handed the card to our room, and the number of the room was 588. And things like this come up all the time. And I think I should point out that 588 is, is a number which is divisible by 42. Yes, it's 42 times uh, 13. Do you think numbers have a, a greater um, a preponderance towards synchronicity than, than other things do? Yes, definitely. Yes, I, I do. Yes, yes, I agree with that. For me, uh, sacred numbers 93, uh, although all numbers are sacred. Mm. And uh, on one particular occasion, I was in a dreadful financial quandary, and uh, I don't want to be hungry and homeless, so, uh, you know, I prayed to the divine universe. And uh, suddenly, out of the blue, came a telephone call from a Canadian film producer saying, would I like to be Ken Russell's consultant on his forthcoming project to make a film about Alistair Crowley? Uh, on whom oh, I've written uh, yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> article for the Dictionary of National Biography, and uh, I've written uh, a book about him called The Legacy of the Beast. I think he was a truly great man, and I think he's been very much maligned and misunderstood. So, yes, of course, I jumped at it, but how much money am I going to get for this, Mr. Producer? Twenty-three pounds. <laughs> no, 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 I'm glad to say not. Nobody gets paid their real Three price. months of consultancy with an exceptional man, Ken Russell, and 15,000 Canadian dollars for three months, which added up to, wait for it, 9,300 pounds. Wonderful. Yeah. From, your, from your Crowley thing, I share the same birthday as Crowley, which is the 11th of October, and I have had so many strange synchronicities with the number 11, um, um, particularly, I, I meet people who are also born on the same birthday as me, which is the 11th of October, or, or people who are born on the 11th of another month. I believe you're the 11th, right, aren't you? Yes. But I have so many friends, and it, again, with 23 and 11 seem to be coincidences. But in the novels as well, in, in Crowley's Moonchild, he's the oh, 11th of October. Yes. And then, and it, when I'm uh, doing a project uh, about something, and I'm not quite sure if there's going to be a positive outcome, if I'm reading some fiction, I often find that the hero or heroine is born on the 11th, and that, to me, points the way to a successful mm -hmm. outcome. It's quite bizarre. But the amount is, of people on my own birthday I know of the 11th. Is that because you feel good about that? Because you feel good about the fact well, no, that your, your that. character it's, it's, is it's, born on, the, on no, your birthday? No, it's not birthday. just that. I, 11 has... Um, uh, when I either bought or sold a flat, I was looking through my diary, actually, and it seems... That, my diaries. And it seems that 11th is the day that I tend to sign things. Mm. My, my, my contract my publisher was signed on the 11th. Uh, I look in my diary, and, and if, it, if it's not a property deal or, or something that's, that's uh, important to, 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 to continue my career, um, I find that 11th, uh, the last three years my, when I've been keeping a diary, it's been a free day when I've absolutely done nothing, and it's been a time to reflect. And today, as we, as we do this programme, it's an 11-day in numerology, so there you go. All right, <laughs> it's absolutely. Your day. But, of course, this is where numerology can be a very bad thing, because the First World War, of course, ended on the 11th of the 11th at 11 o'clock. So that's, well, that's, that's bad? bad. That's a good thing. No, it's a bad thing, because, a they could have, because they could have ended it a couple of days earlier, but they decided, let's make it a symbolic yeah, thing. Wolf thing. Wolf yeah. 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 Make but it that's dial. Dial. that's dial. So those But that's not numerology. That's not numerology. That's moving the goalposts to fit. That's advertising. Your, your number, Chris, is 23. How, how did that manifest itself? Well, I um, sort of got involved with this group called the Discordians. Um, I was sort of not uh, a member, but I um, 
have met people who are. Are there a um, <coughs> who are the Discordians? The Discordians. Um, there's a Greek goddess called Eris, who's the goddess of chaos, which is oh, interesting. Mm. And um, she's um, they um, are worshippers of Eris, and um, most people glance at their stuff and think, ah, it's they're pissing around, and then. Um, um, messing around, <laughs> and um, then um, when they actually get to know them well, often they discover they're far more serious than they'd have liked to realise. And what did Eris but, um, preach? The number 23 is, um, there, I've got one of the um, things here, there's um, the law of fives, which is um, mm -hmm. one of your numbers, but um, which is saying that everything relates in some way to the number five, if you look hard enough, mm -hmm. which I think may be a little tongue-in-cheek, but um, so they also said the <laughs> um, number, I'm not going to be able to find it now, but um, they also said that the number 23, here we are, um, the um, Holy 23, which is 2 plus 3 is 5, and has been incorporated. And um, a lot of them tend to use the number 23 a lot, and so I started mm. looking at the number 23 after this. Um, it's a lot of different bits of sort of underground culture revolve around the number, um, music and stuff especially. And The, the Simpsons? Yes, um, The Simpsons and The X-Files both um, you, if, um, have a disproportionate number of 23s and 5s. Give, give me some examples of The Simpsons, because okay. I know nothing about The X-Files. <laughs> yes, I know everything about The Simpsons. The Simpsons, <laughs> yeah, well, as any good, well-thinking man should. Um, example was one episode, um, Bart's done something like smashed the... Um, He's, he's stolen the head of the... Um, of the town founder. Yes, and is, is this gonna, story going to take long, says someone in the mob who are about to lynch him. Uh, he says about 23 minutes. Five seconds. Five seconds. Yes. <laughs> Tell me some more. Um, and it's Jeopardy okay. Springfield, by the way. Yes, I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> getting mm, aggressive. I'm getting such a good education here. I can't <laughs> um, <laughs> what, it's just finally One time when Polo's in Mr Burns' no, mansion, yeah. he wants to use a toilet, and it's um, 23rd door on the left. Um... Uh, this is just uh, trying to think off the top of my head. Um, Extraordinary. The only thing I know about The Simpsons <laughs> is that I, I have a, a little voice file on my computer where every time I turn it off, it says, it's a quote from The Simpsons, which is, God bless those pagans. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, we were going to tell them. Is there a cryptic call? Something behind The Simpsons. I think they're just a numerological or a series as well. And can I just say, every time I turn my computer off, Lisa Simpson says, I find this demeaning and embarrassing beyond my worst nightmares. Fine. So you and I obviously have something deep in common here. <laughs> you know everything about The Simpsons and I know nothing. Mm. Mm -hmm. No. Extraordinary. I want to hear some more Simpsons 20 okay, things and then I want to hear <laughs> what exactly you did in the Discordian Society. Well, I, um, I didn't actually, I did some web pages about them. Um, one of the things I did was a web page which, um, on the internet this is, and people who looked at this thing could add their own interesting 23 references. Mm -hmm. And um, some of them I got students telling me that was how many um, women they'd had um, associations with, I can say that, um, on um, that week or whatever. <laughs> and um, some of them were really interesting. Um, some people had had sort of a real run of um, experiences. Um, there's um, the interesting one that's pointing out about life with the number 23 is um, I think Crowley associated it with um, reproduction. Mm -hmm. Crowley associated uh, everything with reproduction. Well, of course. <laughs> okay. yes. the no, the can letter, I also add, by the way, now that we're talking people about people synchronicity, I, I should point out, because yeah. this might be very exciting for you, that my parents were in a hotel in the Brecon Beacons. It used to be a hunting lodge, and Alistair Crowley was, was a regular uh, guest at this, at this lodge <laughs> to go out... Uh, no, walking, I would imagine, actually, walking. because yeah. in his younger days he wasn't a particularly heavy drinker. No, and a superb mountaineer. I was somewhat surprised when uh, one of the reasons 93 is sacred to me is I'm an adherent to a philosophy known as Thelema, the prophet of which uh, was Alistair Crowley. And Thelema, spelt in Greek, and by Greek Kabbalah, that is to say, a method of equating letters and numbers, adds up to 93. Crowley didn't know that at all. The earlier works he'd written on Kabbalah, uh, he has virtually nothing to say about 93, and then suddenly Thelema adds up to 93. But is that, the, is that the, the only time it does, or, or do you think that was his synchronistic number as well? I, th I think it was. There and, but there's also a very significant uh, fact that, again, it took two years for me to discover the Earth on which we get our life is 93 million miles from the sun. <laughs> so there is perhaps <laughs> a further sacred hours. significance. Um, 90, um, 90, 93 is fascinating for, for lots of reasons. <laughs> I mean, 93 is, is uh, 3 times 31. 
Yes. 31 in Kabbalah is the number of Al, which is one of the names of God. If you multiply that by three, you get 93. Whenever you have God and a triplicity, you're talking about the feminine aspect. Yes. And there are strong grounds to believe that with the introduction of the laws of Thelema, which Crowley propagated in 1904, um, that we are seeing an increase in respect for and worship of the goddess force rather than the dominative male god force that we've had over the last 2,000 years or so. So we're seeing, with the increase of this current, we're seeing the triple goddess now rather than the single male god. And it's, had it's Graves, Graves' book as well, where he, he, he decided the white that goddess. out of the... Um, absolutely. Out of the Welsh. And Probably one of the most remarkable books ever written. Oh, absolutely. Written. Uh, totally, totally. Um, phenomenal but, book. But there again, his, uh, uh, his words, I mean, he says in it, they have number combinations which are, have significances beyond just what he's talking about. But he related numbers, of course, to the, the metre of, uh, uh, of poems. He, I mean, he was a master technician. Graves in oh, Robert yeah, Graves in, in terms of his poetry, but he would fiddle for years with a single line of poetry to make the meter fit the golden mean. Yes, um, which of course well, all featured po in all poetry uh, certainly not not necessarily free verse, all that has its associations too, but all lyrical poetry um, um, has 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 number correlations. Mm -hmm. Totally, depending on what meter you're writing. And in. of course, the Welsh bardic poetry, the traditional um, Druid poetry uh, the, of the Derwidiae has the triple form within it. There is always the traditional three... Which it has, I believe, in Sanskrit and the Hinduism that is, and, and therefore the Bra, the, th the triple course, god of the And Hindus. everybody these days is, well, should be aware that uh, the Celtic people derive their origins from the Sanskrit. Well, no, 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 absolutely. Can I ask about, just about the, 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 the um, thing about um, the calming effect of numbers. Why do we need to ourselves with numbers? Well, well numerology deals with um, potential, personality analysis potential. There is nothing, if you ever hear a numerologist talking about what can go wrong with you, or that's a bad aspect, or which is a word we don't use, forget it, because Pythagoras only ever needed to tell us what we were terrific at and for the good of man, mm -hmm. for the understanding. Numerology is only a simple way of understanding. Sorry? Isn't that a little unbalanced? Mm. No, I haven't finished my sentence Sorry. yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he, he, he actually taught people to listen um, at his university in Croton and I in Samos. Bring in music here, because mm. music, after all, is, is, music is the, the audible manifestation yeah. of mathematical sequences. And certain uh, and Pythagoras indeed had a had a That's system a of music as well. It. No, but it's but it's <laughs> absolutely true. That's where uh, um, um, uh, maths and art. Uh, they're seen as separate things, but they do collide in music. Mm -hmm. And certain pieces of music have that soothing effect on you, or mm -hmm. uh, a the hypnotic effect. Yeah. Uh, in fact, they have hits after all these maths years. Now, mm -hmm. Classical music. Yeah. Number sequences now so have many. a visual manifestation mm -hmm. in fractals, which you can mm -hmm. see on computers. Mm -hmm. And the whole rave culture is is exactly the, the certain yeah. beats and certain rhythms, which are which is which is numerical sequences combined with these visual sequences, produce this ecstatic state, which has not mm -hmm. necessarily got anything to do with the drugs. That people are taking. But do you not find that that's taken the soul out <coughs> of music? Well, actually, I find it rather Computers satanic, if I can use I that mean, word. For, for mm. me, the, the, the soul of music comes from the randomness the human, the within. Human. I mean, there is now such a thing. I mean, uh, I, I, I write music. I'm part of a band. We were making an album called Pagan Easter. Um, now, this album was recorded on a label run by a chap called Genesis P. Orridge. Now, there's a name to conjure with. Throbbing <laughs> um, <laughs> well. Gristle, Psychic TV, and his own personal fascination with the number 23, which happens to be the one that, that, that Chris and I like very much. Um, when we were recording the album, you, you set up various things like reverb units and so forth. And because the album was based around magical concepts and magical principles, we decided that what we would do would be to use magical numbers in every possible opportunity. So, for example, the main digital reverb unit was set to reverberate at 418 milliseconds. 418 is traditionally the number of the great magical work. And we put all these different numbers in uh, all over the place. What does it sound like? Wonderful. I was really pleased with it. It was a very nice mix. Thank you. How nice. does it go? <laughs> Thank you for the plug. How does it go? I'll tell you, well, if you've got some time. I'm trying to hunt something done when, with MIDI. Yeah. yeah. When we um, came to cut cheap. it to vinyl, I noticed. Um, when we came to cut it to vinyl, because this is in the days of, um, uh, of dinosauric things like uh, real plastic records and things like this, 
we stopped the lathe at the final thing, it counts in digital format, so you have minutes, seconds and frames. And when we stopped the lathe, it had stopped at 23 minutes, 23 seconds and 23 frames. And you couldn't do that. I mean, if you know anything about digital technology, to try and stop dead on a frame is impossible. Mm -hmm. So we ended up cutting an album related to a guy who had 23 as a fascination number. Is that Genesis PR? Genesis, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it, and it finished on this extraordinary piece of synchronicity. Um, we didn't sell 23 million copies of the album. <laughs> Psychic TV, Yet. actually, is um, interesting. I think they're in Guinness Book of Records for having 23 albums in one year. Yes. yes. For yes. that reason. 16, uh, 16 yeah, of which I co-produced. Did you really? Yes. <laughs> Good God. Yeah. Back, back to numbers for a minute. Meg, if I found out what my number was, would I be a lot calmer? Um... It's a pun there, a lot calmer. <laughs> <laughs> you need a calmer mechanic. Uh, it, it would be your life path number. Your date of birth holds your life path number and the personal year that you're in. And you should not believe what any numerologist, including myself, tells you. You only see if there's anything in it for yourself. OK, then. Would you like to know your date of birth, your life path number? Um, yeah, because I already actually know my date of birth. Oh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, your life path number. <laughs> OK. <laughs> And, and when, you, when you tell me my life path number, will I, will I immediately say, oh, that number is constantly in my I don't life. know. There's free will in everything. Mm. Okay. You will if we're staging What's this. your date of birth? 10th of the 5th, 1967. Okay. Your well, I mean, you, chart you through know. numerology indicates that you are a master number 11. And that's a person mm. who's a bit of a loner. Um, and a, a beautiful a, loner? Beautiful. Bit of a... <laughs> oh, right. Um, I've always a, actually a bit, considered a bit of a loner. to be a beautiful loner. <laughs> but, a, but a guy who um, prefers truth to the lie, a guy who will actually um, uh, prefer to walk alone, even though he'd be very popular. It's nothing to do with loneliness, remember? Mm. All one is complete. This is Lonely is lone lie. So 29 is a master number, is um, someone who actually shines a torch with his darkness um, and to say you walk towards your fears generally, you don't actually walk away from them. Um, your life path number will also help you to um, show others to forget their fears or to say, look, these, these are man-made. But the chart also indicates, through numerology I say only, a man who's brilliant with information. This is the man who's a teacher, the man who absorbs. Probably your first, uh, absorbs information like a sponge. Probably your first word, words weren't mummy and daddy. It was, did you know? OK, facts are important to you. But you have one major Pythagorean line of determination through that chart that carries you. But you're quite shy when it comes to matters of the heart. Logic, PhD, material side, money always turns up. Mm. And your middle distance number is five. And that's to say you might be a bit claustrophobic. Don't hem me in. Don't tie me down. That's how that works. <laughs> yeah, it's me. He's a very fine analysis. What about the bad side? I'm Isn't not interested in that. You do that perfectly. We live in a Western world where well, we do our bad side perfectly. <laughs> um, Eleven you should never rob a bank um, because they always get caught. You know, they say, oh, hi, how's your mother? And you go, oh, God, take the stocking off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll cancel my plans for the morning then. <laughs> no, that's fascinating. Thank you very much. <laughs> and my number's 11. Somebody else's number here is 11. Mine's 11. Yeah. 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 And uh, mine. I'm a well, good to meet you. Absolutely. One thing about people born in the 11th Well, they always come in threes, don't they? Um, yeah. <laughs> the I, was at, I was thinking about this the other day because um, someone mentioned it about you being the 11th, sort of interested on people born in the 11th, 11th of the 11th month. And um, rather cynical um, sort of reason for that turned up that um, um, I w so the first thing I did was subtract nine months from it, and it's within three days of um, Valentine's Day. Oh, well, Which um, well, I'm well guessing said. that more people are conceived on Valentine's Day. I may be being a little... Well, 11th of um, the 10th, actually. 11th of the 10th. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe not. The then, conception but. on Valentine's Day is not really that dramatically surprising, is no, it? No, it's... Um, yeah. <laughs> We know the date of my daughter's conception. It was Lammas Eve 82, mm. and we know but, that, which is August the 2nd. Silbury well, Hill, is that Silbury right? Hill, correct. Silbury Hill. Yes. Well, you actually went to Silbury Hill to yeah. conceive. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, uh, my wife conceived. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yes, uh, it's, it's been a special place for us for, for as long as we can remember. Very sp uh, Silbury Hill and the, the whole Avebury complex, which, of course, is a calculator. <laughs> Is there much superstition involved in, in this? For instance, if you, see, if you see the number 42 when you walk down the street, you'll think, well, I'm going to be OK today? Uh, oh, definitely, yes. Yes, yes. yes if uh, I'm walking down the street and oh, I'm trying to catch a bus, and along comes a bus and it's a 93 bus, mm -hmm. uh, it puts me in a good mood. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I admit it's uh, uh, superstitious rather than serious uh, numerology, but there are... I'm sure you wouldn't. 
But if I'm worried about things, something, if I don't know what the outcome is going to be, I mean, there's about 11, but seven as well. If I am sort of wondering about, am I going to get the job or is this project going to come off? And I see a bus come past and it says number seven, I know that it's all going to be all right. Whereas if I see another number, it worries me. So I sort of look round, see if I can see a seven. But, but it has to be, you accidentally see it, or it just comes along at the right time. You can't, yeah. mm. you can't. Yeah. You can't the look for it. No, a, manu a manufactured coincidence is not. Well, no, it's not. No, it's not that's it. And, and I, I quite agree with you on that. With um, if if you see the number, do you feel good? Because I wait. Um, a, mm. a recurring number for me is five, and and I I actually um, don't look for the five. It's when it turns up, it I'll say what's the what yes. well, what's the lesson yes. of it, and uh, of that five today. I mean, for instance, mm. um, uh, the two two of the most favourite. Sports have been involved in motorsport, have been, had been anyway. And the two favourite cars are a DB5, which I raced, and a TR5, which I have now. I have, um, I, I remember my very first trip to, to Rio de Janeiro, I'm in the departure lounge at Frankfurt, and this woman starts coming towards me, and she looks quite ferocious, and I thought, oh God, what now? And she goes, come with me, it comes this way. And she goes, would you mind being uprated? And I said, no, not at all. So I was, I was taken to club class and given seat five, and I thought, oh, here we go again, mm. uh, researching another book in, in Greece last year, a book into this lovely hotel. And I said, I don't want a lousy room. And he says, don't worry, fine. And the guy, the concierge, takes me to the room, you know, and shows me. And I said, fine, delicious, beautiful view. He says, just a minute, I think I've got a better room for you. Never thinking room five mm -hmm. and these are only three and I'm saying it's lovely when when the number you say oh, look at these <coughs> major events I'm uh, feeling quite worried actually because I'm on the way here I thought it'd be quite <laughs> funny if we thought 23 that I could talk about and mention and there's a really big as we're walking down the street big 22 <laughs> and about, <laughs> about 10 minutes later there's a really big 24 <laughs> which, um, but they're all there aren't they as a numerologist I'll, I'll yeah. look at I'll look at all factor and number absence, yeah but yeah. Um, you're saying about buses, I think everyone is one of the sort of to look at numbers does look out for buses because it's just a habitual thing. It's like a joke as well in Britain. I mean, if, I, <laughs> if I see bus 242, it makes well, my day. But in Bolivia, there, there, there are no buses, there's only trucks. I mean, you have to do something I have else. There's a band called 242 that um, Front my two best friend's um, favourite band, or one of his favourite bands, is called Front 242. Mm. Um, for reasons I haven't the faintest it's idea. It's the number of asteroid cream hilt, if you're interested in Wagner's <laughs> ring or anything like that. Is that why they're called? Yeah, Do you know two, the numbers four, of all the asteroids? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> all the 42s. I know 424 four is Grace. <laughs> I, I forgot <laughs> 42, I'm sorry. But I'll tell yeah. you... Uh, I, I did <laughs> go all through the 42s <laughs> up to about 4,000. But um, I was giving a talk on... Kepler Research Day to the Astrological Society in London. And I was wondering if a 42 would turn up. And there was a car 420 parked right outside in Caledonian Road when I gave this talk. Kepler, an asteroid Kepler is a multiple of 42. Mm. And so is Halley for Halley's Comet. Did any 42s happen today to you? And Wisdom, uh, no, not particularly today. <laughs> I'd like to be 42 again, so there we go. But I'll tell you, Hamish Macbeth's car is 462. That's a very important thing. Uh, yeah. Speaking of four, I love the story of Crowley when he had to travel from New York to Chicago by train in order to attend to the uh, publication of his work, Book Four. Uh, his sleeping car was number four. In the carriage, numbered four. On train, number 444. <laughs> He said, I suppose I should tell you that in my huge hotel, it's 44444, but actually it wasn't. But uh, he just added, I wonder what the probability against that is. Um, the thing to that, um, today, one, probably. When I, um, we, were buying, we just went to a bookshop before coming here, and um, my um, bill came to something um, not particularly um, noticeable, but um, guy was with it did come to 4444. Because, um, uh, you see, I went and bought a few pounds, things before I came here. I was really hoping that the bill would come to 93. It has on other occasions, but not <laughs> I on this one. I can't so afford all, and also, I can't put 93 on the lottery ticket. Well, you all came here hoping that your numbers would come up, and it didn't with any of you. And it must bode terribly badly for this programme, then, if you all had a run of bad luck on your way here. No, well, not, I'm at all. Not, not at, at all. Yet. Well, as soon as you talk about it, then of course the coincidences start to collapse to a certain extent. We, 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 yeah. what, what we're discussing mm -hmm. here yes, are past tense. Well, um, certainly not centered tense. Like like experiment, psychic experiment. You try to do in the laboratory, which is perfectly acceptable to people who've seen it. As soon as you 
analyse it and try to go down the microscope and look at it in detail, it won't behave how you want it to. Mm. Yeah. So it's like a love affair, isn't it? Analyse it to the hilt and it's gone. Exact mm. Well, exactly. Like, exactly. Know. Yes. Another thing is, I, I gave a talk on asteroids in Venice. Are there many? To the <laughs> ast <laughs> Astrological <laughs> Grotto Surio. <laughs> so painful, so young. At the end, <laughs> they presented <laughs> me with Ruskin's Marks. Mm. Ruskin's Marks. And the text, the actual text, was 210 pages, 42 times 5. And Seamus Heaney edited this of an anthology that myself and uh, Sebastian Barker were in. And I've got the Oxford Book of Modern Poetry, uh, which is in three volumes. And the last page is 468. And Seamus Heaney is on that. Mm. And this year he's won the Whitbread Prize. Well, he's a good poet. Oh, yes. <laughs> Did you know, by the way, that, that just a bit of information I just remembered, that if A equals 3, B equals 6, C equals nine and so on. Um, the reference Ian Paisley adds up to six six six. <laughs> this is I don't know if you know that. Yes, but he doesn't equal three. Nearer to Miss Yarnus, <laughs> one of ours, apparently adds up to six six. And I can't remember if anybody's going to try this. I can't remember whether it's the Rev Ian Paisley. It is, the, yeah, the Rev Ian Paisley. So you knew that? Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, six, 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 six is a favourite. I mean, it's we've, we've had, had this guy recently. It's artistic, life. artistic, 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 artistic only comes license. from the Book of Revelations. Yeah. And, 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 well, no, but that's where and Crowley what, takes it from. No, but... <laughs> The 666 is, is really, it's meant to be a cryptic reference to the name of the Emperor Nero. So it was the devil's telephone number. Well, you know. and, and Rome is meant to be Babylon, and so that's, so yeah. that's basically how you see but that But don't one. you think people take this kind of thing to, to really silly? Ridiculous. I mean, yeah. there's, there's, there's yeah. a around at numbers. the moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's with Christians, um, uh, um, certain Christians, this um, numerology, and then in um, Revelation, um, it's a book about numerology. Yes, um, seven, seven, it reads seven, like seven. a um, numerologist or a cabalist who's gone on a particularly yep. bad trip. You know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and the book of num numbers has very little information. But there's, this, <laughs> there's this wonderful pillock at the moment going around calling himself a witch who claims to be able to exorcise your number plate if it's 666. Oh, six, six. Oh, I mean, have you ever heard anything more <laughs> sordid? No, but, but, Make money off the Americans. But hasn't the government banned all number plates with the 666? There was a story in the news that they did. they did, actually, quite oh, frankly. But if you've seen the news and you believe it, Gerald. <laughs> well, uh, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> okay. or, or Can, I've asked you about three times. You never answered the question. What do the Discord, What did you used to do as a member of the Discord? I wasn't a member of the Discordians. Did you ever visit them? Uh, well, I know. So I knew some of them sort of semi-socially. Mm. Um, so what did they do? They'd, they'd sit around. Um, well, no, they tend well, the to Discordians. generally the try and <laughs> try and <laughs> basically um, <laughs> try and think of a way of phrasing it. Um, cause heads. Um, screw-ups, to phrase it carefully, um, basically to make people, um, shock people enough to think by making surreal things happen to people was a, sort of one of the things they tend to do. I went through the basis of data, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I went through a phase, well, this is part of it. Um, to create a reaction. Mm. Um, usually quite funny. I mean, I actually went through a phase of getting, um, what's it, rubber stamps through the post from lots of bizarre places, which was um, uh, I kept for a while and then gave to someone else, but um, this is a good example. Um, well, so the, there was um, some, I think it was in Canada, where some got arrested for having sprayed 23 over loads of buildings. And when they were sentenced for the graffiti thing, there was just the judges summing up with something along the lines of, why? Wonderful. They get 23 and, months, and, so that would have been and isn't it amazing how the conversation's <laughs> going with the negative side of number? What about the joyous side of number? We've done a bit of the joyous side I of number. I know, but what about the, jo the joyous side of um, you know, what it's brought to people or, or um, uh, in medicine? The great, great calculations aren't, aren't you know, the mm -hmm. design. But where, where the world is entirely based, as Gerald said earlier, it's entirely predicated on number. You must have a natural balance. Yes. Numbers give a balance. I'm talking about this conversation. And if we, if we don't observe that balance, I mean, mm -hmm. for me, the beauty comes but starting with the zero and the one, having the, the negative and the positive, mm -hmm. being aware of the turning of the Nothing seasons, aware yeah. of the calendar, aware of the, the nature of how mm -hmm. we progress as a race by mm -hmm. the union of two cells. Two, not three, not one, but two. With 23 chromosomes. With 23 With chromosomes. chromosomes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Bob Anton Wilson, who uh, I see you brought along, yeah. uh, he went and divided up his own personality into 23 uh, people, including the believer, the skeptic, mm. the Buddhist. Uh, I think if we look inside ourselves, uh, as in Hume's inquiry concerning human understanding, mm. we find within ourselves many personalities. Mm. And it's uh, 
Surely uh, one of our tasks, if we desire to evolve, to integrate to them. Realize them all. Yep. I yes, think that is yes. These are all numerical functions. You're talking mm. about but That's what Crowley to tried to do. He tried to realize them all, but he tried in many ways to realize them all separately rather than. He lacked the together. ability to synthesize it. No, I will agree. Entirely. He was far too um, separated um, in, in many ways. I know you disagree with me, Joe. Well, he compartmentalized sure. things. I think one of the problems with numbers is um, numbers are inherently false. Uh, people tend to assume that a mathematical formula represents the world, and um, at best it only ever approximates. And um, we're saying, you're saying about numbers being the base of the world. The thing is, they're not. We're imposing numbers on the world. It's the nearest thing that is to universal language, and I don't mean just the difference Absolutely. between French and English, but it, for, when NASA first sent out its probes, mm -hmm. it, there was information coded in case there was extraterrestrial intelligence, and, and it was encoded in binary system. I which have are, ten uh, fingers Exactly. In any you will be able to yes, understand. Can I just ask, this, is, this, is getting, this, is, this is consistently fascinating, but getting very theoretical. I'd, I'd, I'd like to ask just really how, how you came to be so obsessed with this. You're saying about um, sort of 23. Um, obsessed. Maybe yeah. obsessed is is yeah. is, is yeah. an yeah. insulting word. Yeah, yeah. that's mm. right. Mm. Numbers Seeking hold. Because Pythagoras, truth, yes. Pythagoras was the first man to, to coin the word philosopher, and philosophy is the pursuit of truth. Mm. And I think it's I think it's um, through number. Uh, in any aspect, every single one of us has a valid way of looking internally. But when we impose that number and that intelligence externally, then I think we can, we can become dangerous. Mm. It's just why if I you, say don't, don't I believe. I'm sorry to say the word obsessed. The, obsessed yeah, yeah. the word obsessed was wrong. But <laughs> can only <laughs> remember, it was a slip of the tongue. Well, <laughs> Late at night, it's, it's been a long day. I, I un uh, categorically apologise well, for saying I'm the word obsessed. I'm fascinated by <laughs> numbers. But when I realised that my, my prep school, my maths teacher, was such a bastard, <laughs> and he put me off maths, so it became mysterious to me because I was not interested in the way that like he was teaching it. it. And mm. so suddenly numbers had this incredible mystical significance, um, uh, partly because I probably couldn't understand it at the time because <laughs> he was terrible. Um, but this continued. I was fascinated by how they fit together. It's, it's, it's a language of its own. I remember one thing which is at quite ludicrously early age I got taught um, base theory which is um, how to count other than from one to, um, one to ten then to eleven. I've been very good at base theory and um, been counting, able to count in base two and sixteen is essential for doing any kind of um, intuitive computer work, or maybe not essential, someone will be watching this and glaring at me for saying that, but um, it's really helpful. It's like times tables in um, being a waiter, if you're using a computer, being able to know your um, base 2 and your base 16 is blindingly useful. Um, you were saying about base 2 being... Yes, absolutely. Mm. It's, it's I've got a fairly good intuitive... Where did, it, where did it come from with you? I started studying the Kabbalah when I was quite young, and it, it stemmed from a knowledge of that. Those um, wacky Kabbalists. You can't understand the Kabbalah unless you have that understanding You have of to numbers. understand mathematics entirely. Mm. But mm. what you were saying about people being obsessed can be true. Mm. Um, we used to live downstairs from this absolutely barking American um, who... For an American or...? No, 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 he was barking <laughs> even by American standards. This man was absolutely piano. And... Uh, he, he used to analyse his dog's behaviour in mathematical <laughs> terms <laughs> and, uh, and weigh out precisely the amount of food. That's abnormal. Uh, and but that's we, a compulsion. We, we discovered yeah. that he was totally barking when he decided to work out the harmonic resonance of his washing machine by taking it for a drag. And he humped this thing down the stairs and dragged it along the street. And I thought, that is mathematics. <laughs> and this man is barking. <laughs> he was out for the count, was he? And what he, about you? The number he was out of my today. life, thank God. What was the <laughs> day that the number 42 came into your life? It was life. the 18th of May 1993 when I saw this article by William Hartston in The Independent. <laughs> and, and I immediately <laughs> saw, because this article said that Lewis Carroll probably had Rule 42 and was obsessed by it because it occurs a lot in, in Christianity. Mm. But as a Buddhist, How so? I know that in Buddhist literature there is a number 84,210. It says it's the number of Buddhist countries. I don't know how they chose this number, but you can immediately see that 84,210 is 42 times 2005. <laughs> so, uh, you, talk of <laughs> you can immediately <laughs> see that. Uh, well, that is fairly simple. I didn't immediately see that. Let alone Buddhist. Yes. Well, I think this can, this can go on forever, and it's been fascinating the whole time, but we have to end at some point. And, and I'd actually like to have the last word on this, because I'd like to end this with a very wonderful thing which some people out there may know, some may not, but I'm going to do a wonderful 
magic trick to do with numbers now. I want everybody to think of a number between one and 10. Now multiply that number by nine. Now, if you've got a two digit number, add those digits together. Okay, now subtract five from that number. Now, if A equals one, B equals two, C equals three, D equals four, and so on, change your number into a letter. Think of a country beginning with that letter. Now take the second letter of that country and think of an animal beginning with that letter. Now think of the colour of that animal. Everybody out there, I'm now going to know what you are thinking of. Are you thinking of a grey elephant yes. from Denmark? <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. Everybody here is thinking of a grey elephant? That's the audience. Yes. Yes. I got to Denmark, <laughs> I got to Denmark. I would be pedantic and pick pie, because it's one from one to ten. Yes. Very good trick, and I don't know how you did it. Indivisible. But the best thing about magic is not knowing how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night.